Hey, this is George Porter Jr. And you are watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. And it's live, y'all. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Coming to you today on location, Hollywood, California, with our very, very special guest, Mr. George Porter Jr. Hey, George. How you doing, John? Uh, doing great. We are here. First of all, congratulations. You have just been inducted into the, uh, you know, you've received the Lifetime Achievement Award uh, right. from Bass Player no Magazine. No induction yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Induction could be a good thing. So congratulations on that. The concert last night and, and seeing you play. Your daughter even got up and sang with yeah, you. Yeah, she jumped up and she always surprises me. Oh, sometimes she scares me. I go, oh, there's somebody behind me. <laughs> Well, I want to talk to you about, uh, we'll lead up to that, but you're originally from New Orleans. Already, born and raised. So tell me about, boy, what a what a rich musical heritage where you grew up. Tell me about how you were first exposed to music. Well, uh, my, my probably my first exposure was uh, at, at church. Uh, and my mom, we were, we were, I was raised Catholic, but uh, my mom sang in the, in the choir. And, um, you know, it was, it was, it was kids you know we you know when they would have rehearsals mom would take us to the rehearsals and we would sit up there in the, in the balcony up there while they rehearsing you know so that was the, you know and at, at home my dad my dad played listen to jazz he liked he was into the um the organ players you know uh, uh um not as much as the um the saxophone players but he he, he used to like Sonny Stitt and um so um, so those, you know, we it was always music in the house, always was music, and we lived around the corner from a social pleasure club called the Johnny, the Jolly Bunch, <laughs> and uh, and and these guys, you know, they would do so, you know, there was there was there was an old uh, older how you say, an aging community, so their members were dying probably, you know, may, they might lose members twice a month, you know, <laughs> so whenever they would lose a member, you know, they would have a big second line, you know, so we got to hear the um, the, the brass band plays you know come right in front of the house you oh, know oh i see yeah so you know we, we I, you know, music was part of pretty much uh, 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 i guess it was in one way or the other a solid part of uh, of my life my whole internal life you know well, what about the bass what attracted you to that well, instrument i'm a, originally a classical guitar student from eight to ten Eight to ten and a half, I, I was studying classical guitar. I saw Segovia in concert once. Oh, you did? Yes, I did. I heard him on record. That's what that's what ruined my classical guitar <laughs> career. <laughs> I said, I'll never play like uh, that. Oh, I bet Christopher <laughs> Parkening and uh, John Williams, not the conductor, but the guitar yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. Julian Bream. Yeah, I, I, was I, knew I, I knew I'd never play like that. You yeah. know, and, and, and also what it was is that I, uh, I heard um, a, a young man and his grandfather playing um, with my my teacher was teaching me, you know, kind of country, well, cowboy songs, you know, Home on the Range and Red River Valley and those kind of things to learn the formula. Yeah. I, I I understood much later in life, you know, what he was trying to do. He was teaching me the formula of playing classical music, not classical music. You know, I was going to learn classical music out of some other later point after I learned how to play, you know, have the control of, of ten fingers. But uh, that was that was taking too long for me because I heard Papi and his grandfather playing and they were playing St. Louis Woman. They were playing all these blues songs and I said, man, that's the stuff I want to yeah. play. <laughs> you know? So, um, so that's, that's, that's kind of them. But, um, you know, in school, it was, it was in, in school, there weren't guitar players in school. So, you know, I, I took drums in school. I played, I played the um, snare drum and the bass drum in the school band. Uh -huh. And, uh, and then um, by the time I was, 15 I had we had moved from that neighborhood and we moved in another part of the city um well I was around the corner from a guy named uh, um, um, Herbert Wing who was a guitar player and uh, and he he played he had, he was the owner of a band that the bass player that the guitar bass player that I saw with his grandfather um you know that band they played and they used to play all these college fraternity parties and I, you know, I kind of latched on as a roadie. You know, I mean, I was moving gear just so I can get to hear this music, wow. and uh, and also at the same time um, play, you know, play instruments. I was playing bass, drums, and guitar. I was playing all three of them. Um, Herbert sent me out on a, as a sub on a gig with Art Neville one night really? as a guitar player. Uh -huh. And um, Art Neville said I was the worst guitar player he ever heard. He said. <laughs> 
He said, man, you are horrible. Well, I was a rhythm guitar player. I wasn't a lead player, you know. Yeah. So he said, ah, oh, man, I ain't never calling you no more. <laughs> so um, I, you know, I kind of still, st I, st I still play my guitar even today. Um, but um, the, the move over to bass was, you know, almost was a natural thing because as a classical player, player I was learning how to play bass anyway, you know. Yeah. So bass was a natural, a natural movement. And during the time, uh, um, that was during the time of Vietnam and stuff, so there weren't a lot of bass players and electric bass players in town. So I, I was getting calls, you know, was, you know, Herbert was actually sending me on gigs as a sub for, um, for people called him to come play bass on a gig. He couldn't make it because he was playing somewhere else. He would send me. There you go. How about the funky meters? How did that all come about? Well, the funky meters is today. Back then, it was the original meters. And it was just, well, it wasn't called original. It was just called the meters. And there's a very big distinction between the meters and the funky meters. Well, tell us the story. Uh, well, the, the meters, uh, um, Art Neville, um, after maybe a year and a half of not seeing me and not calling me to come play guitar with him anymore. Um, he came out, I was playing um, bass with a, a guy named uh, Irvin Bannister at a little ballroom on Galvis Street. And Art came in one morning, one night, it was late morning, you know, two o'clock in the morning or something, and I was playing. And after the gig, he walked up to me and said, man, see, that's the instrument you should be playing. I was playing bass. And, um, and he said, you want a gig? And he offered me a gig. So, um, you know, two and a half years later, we were a band called Amitas. Which morphed into? Well, which morphed into uh, the Rolling Stones, you know, the recordings with Robert Palmer, uh, Patti LaBelle, uh, you know, and the, it's gone on and on. Jesse Road, we found a guy mentioned the other night, to, just last night, about Jesse Road, and he, uh, uh, I hadn't heard that name in, in 30 years. <laughs> So what's keeping you busy these days, George? Well, five bands. Um, That'll keep one busy. Five bands. Uh, um, there's this from time to time, maybe twice, maybe this year, um, the original meters are, are playing. Uh, we'll play four gigs before the year's out. Um, next year, we're going to play four gigs right up immediately in the first, first part of the year. Um, Who's in that lineup in the well, original? The original band is um, Leo Nelson Telly. Um, Joseph Madalas, they call Zigaboo on drums, Art Neville on keyboards, and myself. Wow. And that's the original band. Classic lineup. And, uh, and then the difference between that band and the Funky Meters is Art Neville and myself for the Funky Meters with Terrence Houston, the drummer from my solo band, Running Partners, on, on drums, and, um, and, and um, the guitar player is Brian Stokes. And then there's uh, my running partners, my solo running partners band is also a four piece band, sometimes five piece, but the saxophone player has not been there a while because he's, you know, out making money. Um, you know, it has um, it's Brent Anderson on guitar, Mike Lemler, the keyboard player with the, um, with the trio, Terrence Houston on drums, and myself. And then there's um, the foundation of funk, which is Zigaboo Modelis, the Mises original drummer, myself, and two other members from usually other bands you know like we get the the keyboard player and the guitar player from soul live we get the keyboard player and the guitar player from the new master sounds you know robert walters and uh, um we've, we've used um, robert walters and john modusky coming up on, on, on a gig um, i think it's the end of the year um doing, doing that gig with with john and um and and with robert walters we just did a gig with john john modusky and um and the guitar player from the master sounds uh, um couple of weeks ago so that's the foundation of funk and then then there's the porter trio which is this this band here which is mike lemon on keyboards myself and terrence houston on drums that's a lot to keep track of but if you keep it keeps me i'm working pretty much all year round you know it's good for you yeah hey tell me about your equipment my gear well the amps uh the, the amps i'm using is is aguilar rigs okay. Uh, um, my personal rig is a uh, is a Tone Hammer 500 mm -hmm. with the, uh, um, the, the um, I think it's the D DB cabinet, uh, um, uh, four four by ten, um, four arm cabinet, um, on fly dates with uh, with funky meters or with the meters. Um, I use um, uh, the Agrilaw. Uh, well, the head with with my solo stuff is um, is a Tone Hammer 500. The little guy and uh, with the um, funky meters or the meters or any of the bigger bands that I might get in there I use uh, um, I use the um, 
the 750, 751 um, head on a, on two full ten cabinets. I don't like the eight by ten boxes. I like the two full boxes. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of people are saying that they prefer the uh, uh, that configuration. I understand you're a big fan of EBS pedals and effects. I'm a very big fan of those pedals. I, I you know, I, I had went, I used an, another uh, um, pedal uh, company's pedals for for about a year, and um, and I won't name them, but I, I used them and, they, and I, I liked them. They really were clean. They were clean pedals. But what I liked about the EBS pedals more than anything was that um, <clears throat> when you're not using the pedal. The tone, your your tone doesn't change. You know, like some of these effects pedals, when you, when it, it's in your system going, when your bass is going through them, um, they you know they, they have a little change on the on the tone of the of the instrument. Um, with the, when when the pedal is off, it's off with with EBS, and I, I really like that. It's a great company, great people too, Ralph. Yeah. Ralph, whose last name I can't pronounce because oh, he's, he's from uh, Sweden. I couldn't pronounce his first name. I, I was looking at it and, and found out that's exactly the same uh, as my little brother. <laughs> and uh, did I see you were playing a Lakeland bass? Lakeland bass, yeah. Lakeland yes, bass. Uh, um, Dan um, had that bass designed for me. It's, um, the neck is identical to my 38-year-old. Well, actually, it's, it's much older now, the bass, but my original P bass. Um, it's, it's the, the neck is... Um, the exact dimension of that P bass, yeah. And uh, strings, Dear Dario, Planet Wave, yeah. That's I've been using those strings for, wow, probably about twenty five years, yeah, thirty years. Well, yeah. Stick with what works. How about the future, George? What else are you hoping to do? Is there something you've always wanted to do but just haven't gotten around to, or something that you know someday I'm gonna? Well, I, you know, I, I've kind of missed out on a few things because I, things I wanted to do, I wanted, I really wanted to do um, a, a, a gig with, um, with originally um, Zig, Leo, Nocentelli, and myself was, um, it kind of re, um, restructured working as a, as a trio. Well, actually, as a, in hiring different keyboard players to play with us and, um, and really wanted to play with George Duke. I never yeah. got any passed away. Um, just as we were getting ready to reach out to him, you know, he I saw him with Stanley Clark just uh, very shortly before he died. Yeah, and well, Leo was living out here for a while, so Leo Leo knew him, you know, but um, but we just didn't move fast enough to get to, to get to him. And um, but no, right now for me, what's on the table is um is is um developing this Porter Trio um in a studio. Um, and and um, and hopefully it's something we'll have we'll have music out by before Jazz Fest this coming next year. Yeah, that the New Orleans Jazz Fest, New which Orleans. is uh, what what time of year is it? April and May. Okay, well you keep us posted, and we'll be sure to, to share that info with everybody. Absolutely. What would you be if you were not a bass player? Something outside of music. <laughs> I don't know. I've been a bass player too long. <laughs> that question really stumps no, you know, a lot I, of people. I, I, I used I used to love to drive, but you know, like um, driving now, you know, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I just can't. I used to, I used to could drive fifteen hours, you know, without without sweat. I I drew I drew I drink a Red Bull and fall asleep out <laughs> drinking, you know. So now I, no, that's, 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 I mean, I guess I would have been a driver, you know. I like driving. I really well, did. Well, a like cab that. driver, a truck driver, what, no, what a truck was driver more than likely. Yeah, 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 more than likely a truck yeah. driver. Yeah. Well, but, you know what? I think I speak on behalf of all of us. We, we are glad, George Porter Jr., that you are not a truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on the well-deserved award, the Lifetime Achievement recipient from Bass Player Magazine, and uh, I'm, I'm so glad and privileged to have been able to see you in person, in concert last night. Keep doing what you're doing. Much luck, continued success to you always. Congratulations. Right. Thank you very much. You're yeah, right. On location with the esteemed and distinguished George Porter Jr., I'm John Liebman, on location in Hollywood, California. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com.